The introduction is your chance to make a great first impression. It's like a handshake. If you give Isaac a floppy fish handshake when you meet him, he'll probably remember you for that handshake, even though he loves everything else about you. The same thing is true of an introduction. If you write a floppy fish introduction, the marker will remember you for your poor first impression, even if the rest of your essay is great. This lesson will show you what it takes to write a firm introduction. Everything you need to easily pass English ATAR. English ATAR made simple. Powered by Saints Coaching. Welcome to the first of three lessons that show you how to write your response to a responding section question. The natural starting point for this lesson is obviously introductions. In the next lesson, it'll be body paragraphs. And in the lesson after that, conclusions. The previous lesson on structure laid the foundation for this lesson and the next two. In that lesson, we learned about the double-ended funnel essay structure. In this lesson and the following two, we're going to see how that essay structure manifests in actual examples. In this lesson, we'll be taking a look at three introductions, one for each example that we planned for in the lesson on planning two lessons ago. All of that is to say, make sure you've watched the previous two lessons and completed the related workbook activities. I've already hinted at what we'll be doing today, but let's clarify exactly what that is. We'll recap the structure of an introduction, which is the top funnel of the double-ended funnel. Then we'll analyze example one, analyze example two, analyze example three, and outline a simple summary. That's easy. Recapping the structure of an introduction, aka the top funnel. This is what we learned about introductions in the previous lesson on structure. Firstly, the introduction has six elements. The first is the general statement. We learned earlier that the general statement is just a statement that refers to the main elements of the question in a somewhat generic way. Our next element is the transition to text element. This element is a sentence that transitions from the general statement to the next element after this one, which is the plot synopsis. It transitions to the plot synopsis by stating the year the text was published or released and the names of the text creators. Then element number three is the plot synopsis. The plot synopsis is one to two sentences, ideally one that summarize the plot of the text that you will be analyzing. Our next element is the terminology element. Here, you should define any elements of the question that are open to interpretation and won't otherwise be addressed in a different aspect of the introduction. After the terminology element, we have the body paragraphs element. Here, you should write one to two sentences that outline what the focus of each body paragraph will be. Finally, we have the thesis. The thesis is one concise statement, no more than two, that highlights your position on the question that you're answering. Hopefully you're starting to remember these elements and just in case you're not, don't forget about that weird mnemonic that we saw in the previous lesson. That mnemonic is great, terrific people tell big truths. That is our recap of the structure of an introduction, the top funnel. Now let's take a look at our first example. Example number one is the same example number one that we looked at in the lesson on planning. The relevant question for this example is discuss how you developed a more considered interpretation of a text by reflecting on at least one different reading of it. And here is a recap of steps five and six of the planning steps. You'll recall that we looked at the text Pretty Woman in relation to this question and step five is complete the diagram. So this is the completed diagram that we looked at in the planning lesson. My original interpretation is Pretty Woman is about a strong female protagonist who embarks on a journey of self-empowerment. This original interpretation then leads to my more considered interpretation, which is Pretty Woman suggests that women need wealthy men to transform themselves. This part of the question, the more considered interpretation part, then leads to the how, which is how reflecting on at least one different reading of the text help me develop this more considered interpretation. In the lesson on your reading, interpretation and response, we learned that the concept of a reading is influenced by nine different factors. Some of those factors are, and relevantly for this question and this text, context of production and reception, generic conventions of rom-coms, and then the technical construction of the film, specifically looking at visual language features and stylistic features. That's step five of the planning steps in relation to this question. After that, we looked at the determined structure step, step six, the final step. 
The PDF study notes for this lesson has replicated the entirety of step six for each example that we'll be looking at. I'll only refer to the topic of each body paragraph in this video because the topic of each BP is what is really referred to in the body paragraphs element of an introduction. The textual evidence for each BP isn't mentioned in the intro, but analyzing the relevant body paragraph. So this was the thesis that we came up with in the planning lesson. I developed a more considered interpretation of Pretty Woman by reflecting on a feminist reading of it. My first body paragraph will focus on a discussion of context, my second will focus on a discussion of generic conventions, and my third will look at characterization and visual language features. So that's a recap of steps five and six of the planning steps, and here is the original version of the introduction that I wrote. The original version of each introduction that we're looking at in this lesson is reproduced in the PDF study notes. In this video, we'll be focusing on the deconstructed version version of each introduction. And here is our deconstructed version of example number one. Here is the general statement. It is not uncommon for an audience to refine their interpretation of a text after reflecting on a reading different to their own. Moving on to the transition to text. Such was the case regarding my interpretation of the 1990 feature film Pretty Woman, directed by Gary Marshall and starring Richard Gere and Julia Roberts. Here's the plot synopsis. The film tells the story of Edward, an emotionally detached businessman of immense wealth and class who hires Vivian, Roberts, an impecunious and personable sex worker to accompany him to social events for one week. This is the terminology element. My initial interpretation of PW was that it centers on a strong female protagonist who embarks on a journey of self-empowerment. Here is the first part of the thesis. However, after reflecting on a feminist reading of the text, in the middle of this thesis statement, Statement, I incorporate the body paragraphs element of the introduction and the relevance of context, generic conventions and technical construction. Here I finish off the thesis that I started right before that body paragraph element. My more considered interpretation of PW is that it suggests women need wealthy men to transform themselves. That is the deconstructed version of the introduction. Now let's discuss a few comments in relation to each main element of it. Starting with the general statement. Specifically, this part of the general statement, the refine their interpretation part, refers to the developed a more considered interpretation part of the question. Then the reflecting on a reading different to their own part of this general statement refers to the reflecting on at least one different reading of it part of the question. Overall, this is a general statement because it refers to some of the main elements of the question without analyzing them or relating them to a text. Now onto the next element, which is the transition to text. This sentence transitions to the plot synopsis by introducing the text and its relevance to the general statement. We can see this sentence also states some essential information about the text, namely when it was released and who it was directed by. You might have also noticed that I abbreviated the title of the text Pretty Woman to simply PW. I did this because I know that I'll be referring to the title of this text in my essay a lot, and I wanted to avoid writing each and every single letter when I can just abbreviate it to PW. Moving from the transition to text to the plot synopsis element. My plot synopsis is one sentence long and gives enough information to the marker for them to know what the movie is about. Also notice how the sentence highlights the superficial differences between each main character. And emotionally, detached businessman of immense wealth and class versus an impecunious and personable sex worker. Impecunious just means poor. And these parts of the plot synopsis immediately tell the reader that the two main characters are opposites, at least on the surface. The next element is the terminology one. As we've already discussed about this question, I can't have a more considered interpretation without having an original interpretation. So this phrase in the question, more considered interpretation, implies that you need to state what your original interpretation is. This is a perfect example of something that's well suited to put in the terminology element of the intro. It's a term that's ambiguous in the question and requires clarification at the outset. Regarding the body paragraphs element in this excerpt, we can see I've outlined what the topic of each BP will be in this emboldened part. I'll be discussing context in one body paragraph, generic conventions in another, and technical construction in the third one. Last but not least, let's discuss a few things 
things about the thesis. While it isn't necessary to discuss a specific reading practice, such as a feminist reading, a dominant, alternative, or resistant reading, it is necessary to explain which process of making meaning of the text you use, or which lens you use to view the text. Like these ones. By stating I've reflected on a feminist reading of the text, I've clarified the lens through which I have developed a more considered interpretation of it. I then state what my more considered interpretation is. Also note that more considered doesn't necessarily mean a fancier sounding sentence. The body paragraph and thesis elements of this intro actually constitute one sentence rather than a few separate ones. This is fine. The elements of an introduction, and for that matter, the elements of a body paragraph and conclusion, don't always need to be individual sentences. Sometimes the flow of your writing will mean you converge two elements into the one sentence. As long as the sentence makes sense, you're all good. And that wraps up our discussion of example number one. Let's take a look at example number two. Here's our relevant question. Explain how at least one text has transformed or adapted genre to alter an audience's attitude towards an issue or concept. As we know, we're analyzing everything everywhere all at once for this question. And here's a recap of steps five and six of the planning steps for this question. Starting with step five, which is the complete the diagram step. Here is our completed diagram. And our first element of the question is how everything everywhere has transformed genre. At this stage of the planning steps, we firstly outlined what the potential genres of subject matter of everything everywhere could be. And I think the one we focused on was sci-fi. The rest of this column then looked at how everything everywhere transformed sci-fi. And we said everything everywhere transforms the sci-fi genre through its absurdist style, emotional intensity, and structural elements. Moving to this column of the diagram, we said that the audience's original attitude towards this concept of absurdism is one of rejection and disapproval, and that has changed, it's been altered, to become curious and uplifting. And of course, our final main element of the question in this diagram is just a concept, and that concept is absurdism, which refers to the belief that human beings exist in a purposeless, chaotic universe. That is step number five, and our step number six was determined structure. A reminder that the PDF study notes has replicated the the entirety of step six. We will just take a look at a condensed version of step six in this video. So our thesis for this question is as follows. Everything everywhere all at once has transformed the science fiction genre through its absurdist style, emotional intensity, and manipulation of structural elements to change sci-fi enthusiasts disapproving attitude towards absurdism. The topic of each body paragraph is as follows. BP1, absurdist style, BP2, emotional intensity, and BP3, structural elements. Here's the original version of the introduction. And here is the deconstructed version, which we'll read out. Starting with the general statement. Genre is a powerful mechanism by which text creators can alter an audience's attitude towards a concept. Here's the transition to text element. Everything, everywhere, all at once, E-E-A-A-O, released in 2022 and directed by Dan Kwan and Daniel Scheinert, collectively known as Daniels, epitomizes that assertion. Plot synopsis. The film follows Evelyn Wang, played by Michelle Yeoh, an aging Chinese immigrant, as she navigates a marital breakdown, accepting her daughter's sexuality, doing her taxes, and saving the multiverse. Here is the terminology element. Although Everything Everywhere's most appropriate classification is arguably science fiction, it could equally be regarded as an action, adventure, comedy, coming of age, drama, fantasy, romance, and or superhero film. In this way, the text transforms the sci-fi genre by blending various elements of other genres into its overarching story. And here's the body paragraph element. Namely, everything everywhere adopts an absurdist style one might expect to see in a comedy, has the emotional intensity of a drama, and manipulates structural elements like an adventure film. Lastly, the thesis. These notable aspects of the film are instrumental in altering its audience of sci-fi enthusiasts' attitude towards the concept of absurdism the belief that human beings exist in a purposeless chaotic universe, from one of understandable disapproval to one of uplifting curiosity. That is our deconstructed version of the introduction. Here are some comments about each element of that intro. Firstly, in relation to the general statement. The general statement is about genre and how it can be used to alter an audience's attitude towards a concept. By saying towards a concept, rather than saying towards an issue or concept, I'm telling the marker straight away that 
that I know the question asked me to choose a concept or an issue and not both. Note that the general statement doesn't explicitly refer to the words transformed or adapted from the question. It doesn't need to. Remember, the general statement is just easing the marker into the essay and it isn't directly answering the question. That's why it should only address one or two elements of the question in a general way. Next up, we have the transition to text. This part of the intro transitions from the general statement to the plot synopsis of the text by introducing it. The sentence states the essential info of the text, namely its release date and its directors. And there is no way I am writing everything everywhere all at once every single time. So once again, I've just abbreviated the title to create more time to write other things throughout the time I have to complete this essay. From the transition to text, we've got the plot synopsis. There's a hint of style in how I've worded this plot synopsis. I list all of these random things that the movie is about, like marital breakdown, accepting her daughter's sexuality, doing her taxes, and then withhold a central aspect of the movie's plot until the very end, which is saving the multiverse. If you can incorporate some flair into how you word the plot synopsis, your marker will really appreciate it. After that, we've got the terminology section. Both terminology sentences in my introduction serve the purpose of how everything everywhere has transformed genre. That term would remain ambiguous, open to interpretation, if I didn't directly address it. This second sentence in the terminology section of the introduction is very close to a direct answer to the question or a thesis statement. However, it doesn't address the alter an audience's attitude towards a concept part of the question. Then we've got the body paragraphs element of the intro. The two sentences in the terminology element of the intro stated that everything everywhere is primarily sci-fi, but it also blends other genres. The purpose of explaining that everything everywhere blends other genres in that terminology element of the intro is explained here. In this element of my intro, I've specified the particular genres that influence the transformation of the sci-fi genre. I also indicate that I'll be referring to each genre, comedy, drama, and adventure in my body paragraphs. Finally, we have the thesis. In this thesis, I explain that it's the incorporation of various elements from other genres that alter the audience's attitude towards the concept of absurdism. This thesis statement is the most direct and specific answer to the question. It specifies the an audience part of the question because I specify audience of sci-fi enthusiasts. It states a concept absurdism and then defines it. Finally, the alter an audience's attitude part of the question suggests that an original attitude has changed to a different one. In light of that, I state what the original attitude towards absurdism is, one of understandable disapproval, and I state what the change attitude is, one of uplifting curiosity. And that is everything I wanted to say about the intro for example number two. Now let's take a look at our third and final example. Relevant question, compare how two texts of different modes use textual features to represent a similar idea or theme. The two texts that we're comparing for this question are Snow Crash and Arrival. The first one is a book and the second one is a movie. Here's a recap of steps five and six of the planning steps for this question. Starting with step number five, complete the diagram. This question required us to compare how Snow Crash and Arrival use textual features to represent a similar theme. Snow Crash represents a theme of encoding information and it uses the following textual features to do that. Analogies between spoken language and other information systems, the symbolism of bodily fluids and the setting. On the other hand, Arrival represents the theme of language and cognition and it uses narration, circular structure and symbolism of the geometrical shapes as textual features to represent that theme. And here is the sixth and final step for the planning steps of this question. It is determined structure. Once again, we're just looking at a condensed version of step number six, but the full version you can find in the PDF study notes. The thesis for this question is Snow Crash and Arrival use textual features to represent similar themes pertaining to language. Body paragraph one will discuss a difference in the text, and that is how firstly Snow Crash uses analogies, and secondly how Arrival uses narration. The second body paragraph will then discuss a similarity between the texts, and that is how both texts use symbolism. And the third and final body paragraph will discuss another the difference, namely how Snow Crash represents its setting of the metaverse and how Arrival uses a circular structure. That's a recap of the planning steps. Here is the original version of this introduction. And here is the deconstructed version. General statement. 
The modality of a text significantly influences the way in which its creators represent themes. Transition to text. The novel Snow Crash, published in 1992 and authored by Neil Stevenson, and the feature film Arrival, released in 2016 and directed by Denis Villeneuve, are notable examples. Moving on to the plot synopsis. SC showcases with uncanny accuracy and prescience the extreme outcomes of societal and economic trends that are enabled by technological advancements such as cryptocurrency and and virtual reality. On the other hand, Arrival takes a novel approach towards the first contact with an alien race subgenre of sci-fi by exploring how humanity would communicate with, rather than overcome, extraterrestrial beings. Moving on to the body paragraphs element. SC, created in the written mode, uses symbolism, analogies, and setting to represent the ubiquity of encoded information. Meanwhile, Arrival, created in the visual and auditory modes, similarly employs symbolism but contrastingly utilizes as the narration of its protagonist and a circular narrative structure to contemplate the significance of language on cognition. Finally, we have the thesis. In this way, these ostensibly disparate texts similarly represent a theme pertaining to language. That's our deconstructed version of the introduction. One more time, let's discuss some comments in relation to it. Starting with our general statement. This word modality with the brackets IES is a subtle way of telling the marker that I acknowledge that text can be multimodal and foreshadows that one of the texts that I will analyze will be multimodal. Like the previous example, this sentence tells the marker that I know the question requires me to discuss a similar idea or theme and that I've chosen the latter. Matter. I've chosen to discuss themes. Now onto the next element, the transition to text. Like the other examples, I don't have to write Snow Crash every single time when SC will suffice. This is a small change, but it really adds up over the entirety of an essay. This element also states the essential info about each text, which is when each text was released and who it was authored or directed by. This sentence transitions from the general statement to the plot synopsis of both texts by by introducing them. Then, of course, we move to the plot synopsis. Markers would appreciate diction such as uncanny accuracy and prescience. It's a great first impression. There is no reason not to have a great plot synopsis, especially now that you know that you can memorize it and reproduce it every time you write an essay about this text. This transition phrase, on the other hand, has the combined effect of indicating I'm going to refer to the other text and that the plot of the other text is quite different. Don't forget to use transition words like this in comparison questions. Then we have the terminology section. No. There wasn't any term in the question that I felt required elaboration that couldn't otherwise be addressed in a different element of the introduction. The question's wording is pretty straightforward, as is usually the case with comparison questions. From the plot synopsis, we went to the body paragraphs element. My body paragraph sentence about Snow Crash addresses the different modes part of the question by stating what mode Snow Crash uses. It also outlines that I'll be focusing on symbolism, analogies, and setting in the body paragraphs of my response. Turning to my body paragraph sentence about arrival, once again it addresses the different modes part of the question by stating what modes the text uses, and the fact that arrival is multimodal as opposed to monomodal, which means just one mode, satisfies the question's requirement that both texts are of different modes. This sentence also outlines that I'll be focusing on symbolism, narration, and a circular narrative structure in the body paragraphs of of my response. The phrase similarly employs symbolism but contrastingly utilizes, illustrates to the marker that I understand this question requires me to compare both texts, meaning I should look at the similarities and differences. I'll further illustrate to the marker that I understand the question is requiring me to compare by referring to both texts in each body paragraph rather than only one text per body paragraph. Lastly, in this element of the intro, I also refer to each text theme. For Snow Crash, it's the ubiquity of encoded information, and for Arrival, it's the significance of language on cognition. Finally, we've got the thesis. The thesis establishes what the similar theme between both texts is, language. Note, this thesis statement could address additional elements of the question, such as the text's different modes. However, doing this might have made the sentence overly long and less clear. It's pretty tricky to address every element of the question in a thesis statement, 
without making that thesis statement too wordy or too long. That compares two texts because you practically have to write twice the amount of information in this statement than you would in a thesis about one text. And that is all the main content for this lesson. Let's do a simple summary. First main part of this lesson, we recapped the structure of an introduction, which is the top funnel of our weird double-ended drinking funnel. Our mnemonic for this part of the essay is great, terrific people tell big truths. The G part of this mnemonic refers to the general statement of the intro. The general statement is a statement that refers to the main elements of the question in a somewhat generic way. Then we have the transition to text. This is a sentence that transitions from the general statement to the plot synopsis of the text by stating the year the text was published or released and the name of the text creator. From the transition to text, we have the plot synopsis. And this is one to two sentences, ideally one, that summarizes the plot of the text you'll be analyzing. From the plot synopsis, we have the terminology element. This involves defining any elements of the question that are open to interpretation and won't otherwise be addressed in a different aspect of the intro. From there, we've got the body paragraphs. This is one to two sentences that outline what the focus of each BP will be. Finally, we have the thesis. The thesis is one concise statement no more than two, that highlights your position on the question. After recapping what the structure of an introduction is, we focused on the introduction for example one, example two, and example three. Here are some takeaways from this part of the lesson. Firstly, you should abbreviate the title of a text you're analyzing if it's two or more words. The convention for doing this in essay writing is as follows. Write the full name of the text the first time you refer to it, followed by its abbreviation in brackets, surrounded by single quotation marks. For for example, such was the case regarding my interpretation of the 1990 feature film Pretty Woman. This is the first time I refer to the title of the text, and that is in my intro. So I write it out in full the first time, then I abbreviate it, PW, have single quotation marks, and then brackets. Once you've done that, you should use the abbreviated version without brackets and quotation marks each subsequent time you refer to the text title. In this example, because I've already abbreviated the title of Pretty Woman to PW, the next time I refer to the title of the text could look something like this. My initial interpretation of PW was that it centers on a strong female protagonist who embarks on a journey of self-empowerment. Note, sometimes it's actually nice to write the full title of the text in the conclusion. This is a stylistic choice that you may or may not make. Another useful takeaway from this segment of the lesson, each element of an introduction, G, T, P, T, B, T, need not represent its own separate sentence. Rather, sometimes the flow of your writing will lead to multiple elements forming one whole sentence. And we saw an example of that in the the pretty woman introduction as well. This is the final sentence of the introduction for that question. It is one sentence and it includes both the body paragraphs and the thesis statement elements of an introduction. Another takeaway is as follows. The plot synopsis is a great opportunity to show off some appropriate diction and impress the marker. Appropriate diction just refers to words that actually enhance the meaning of the sentence rather than making it verbose basically just means overly wordy and confusing. A good example of some appropriate diction is as follows. SC showcases with uncanny accuracy and prescience the extreme outcomes of societal and economic trends. We also learned that when the question allows you to address one concept or another, the general statement can be used to tell the marker which one you've chosen in an indirect way. For example, the question is explain how at least one text transformed or adapted genre to alter an audience's attitude towards an issue or concept, then my general statement is as follows. Genre is a powerful mechanism by which text creators can alter an audience's attitude towards a concept. This general statement is telling the marker I've chosen to discuss a concept rather than an issue. Finally, we learned that your thesis statement should clearly articulate your position on at least one main element of the question. An example is, in this way, these ostensibly disparate texts similarly represent a theme pertaining to language. Another lesson done. As as always, congrats for making it to the end of this lesson. I really do mean that whenever I say it because I know that there are a million other things you would rather be doing right now than studying for English ATAR. Just remind yourself of the why. The reason why you're doing this in the first place. It might be to reduce the stress of the English ATAR WACE exam, get into uni without doing the stat, or simply to increase your ATAR. Whatever the reason, reminding yourself of it is a powerful motivator. Bear 
that why in mind as you're completing the activities for this lesson. I'm sure you can guess what the activities require you to do, but before you get to that main part, you're asked to do a few more reps of memorizing the plot synopsis you came up with from the previous lesson's activities. Good luck with all of that. Remember your why, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, keep it simple. <laughs>